fucking moron! <laughs> hey! Moron! Duh! <laughs> <laughs> look, look at me! I'm the Wooa Water Boy, dude! Well, good Tuesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, talking, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Okay, so we are all morons living in Jerry Jones's world here. Today, it's Tuesday. And today is when Jerry Jones goes on 105.3 The Fan. And, of course, you know, I, I'm beginning to believe that we have been tricked a little bit here. Just, just a little bit. Um, I'm going to say Jerry Jones has got us. Oh, I see it. I see it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been this is what he does you know what's funny is i'm beginning to think that last week's outburst was planned think about it for a second it got us off of talking about how bad the lions molly whopped us it did it got us really off of talking about trades and things of different players that we should trade for what it got was sympathy for 105 to 3 the fan more publicity more people watching and so on that jerry jones who is the marketing genius out there that literally this morning I, I just went on 105, the fan. I had to go out and go to the dump and do some things. And people were watching this. There are 2,000 people watching it live on YouTube. They don't normally get that kind of viewership on their show. So some things that he said, um, and I'm going to listen to it. I haven't listened to it myself. I'm just going by the headlines of this morning. Uh, it seems like a lot of people were disappointed. They were looking for fireworks and things to go off but that didn't seem to happen but jerry basically said um micah parson and deron blinn will basically be a game time decision um he also agreed with troy aikman uh and said troy is credible i think it's fair and i think we can improve so let's go ahead and listen to the uh broadcast here for ourselves Upon us as Jerry is joining us right now on DFW Sports Station. Good morning, Jerry. How are you? And how you doing, RJ? Good to be on with you guys. Oh man, that stings. That stings, Jerry. RJ's the only one not here today. Well, uh, did he uh, want to avoid the confrontation? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Jerry, well, what do you want to say, if anything, about last week? I don't have anything to say about last week. Uh, uh, I, I'm happy, though, that I'm, I must be tell you I'm surprised that uh, uh, last week got the attention it got. But, uh, you know, uh, really when I think about what we try to do on this show, for me, is uh, I think we give you uh, uh, two shots a week uh, that I get on and Stephen gets on once or twice and, and uh, Mike, uh, I don't know if Mike gets on or not, but uh, those are really uh, a, a privilege. Uh, it's kind of like pillow talk. Uh, you get uh, you get some inside stuff, as you know. Uh, I don't go before the normal press conferences uh, during the week usually. Yeah. And so this is the kind of thing that. Uh, uh, I would expect and how I would answer it relative to uh, many of your questions. Uh, you're going to ask me today because Henry had a big night, Derrick Henry last night. You're going to ask me again uh, of how come when Henry was available and right here in Dallas said he didn't, uh, we didn't get him. And mm -hmm. I will tell you, uh, 
the same kind of question is one that uh, my wife might ask me of 60 something years uh, why did you do that yeah and I said well I really don't know why I did that the devil made me do it <laughs> and so my point is those kinds of questions are pointedly toward putting you on a spot to make a certain kind of answer yeah I've obviously been asked that Derek Henry question almost every day uh, since we started training camp and so that's a uh, get in your ass type of question yeah and I understand that I see that coming and that's real good mm -hmm. uh, but when you do it uh, several times <laughs> and of course you know I keep up with what you guys say when I'm not on the show and so when you do it several times yeah I know that uh, uh, when you're asked uh, about a question such as one that you might have at home uh, why did you do that and you do it several times then you really know what what the situation is where it's coming from so um, uh, those are those are the kinds of things that uh, uh, this show to me can and uh, be, be about uh, for instance uh, if you ask me uh, how I make a decision I would say I'd maybe go back to a story of when I was buying the Cowboys and we got down to where there was a three hundred thousand dollar difference and uh, we couldn't get by it, the man that sold the team to me and so he suggested we flip a coin and we flipped that coin and I lost I really got screwed I ended up with the Dallas Cowboys my <laughs> point is I don't know why I called heads rather than tails and I couldn't explain to you why I called heads rather than tails but some of this stuff works out some of it doesn't that's the kind of thing and the kind of answers I would expect us to be talking about on this show. Yeah. And I, I, I get all that. And, and, and normally we're, we're, we're usually on the same page in terms of the topics and the subjects. That's why I think last week threw us off a little bit. But look, man, as, as I've said multiple times, Jerry, you, you've provided us, you know, radio gold. And it is, a, it is a privilege to be able to do this show with you for 15 years. And yeah, that's kissing we, now. We, we had some fireworks. And uh, that's kind of the way I view it, uh, despite, you know, the, the, the payment and suspension and move the show and all that stuff, because we're usually in lockstep. So I, I understand that. Listen, kissing the, the ring. The fact that we've been doing it 15 years. Yeah. Uh, it shows that. Kumbaya uh, moments. Uh, someplace in between there. Uh, we got comfortable uh, in our skin uh, doing these type things, and we did get comfortable with it. <laughs> now, I'm tickled to death that um, we have as much interest in this as we do, and as you well know. But, uh, but guys, uh, I have no issue, and you know that. As a matter of fact, you've said that. I have no issue with getting up in front of a bunch of, of uh, uh, media and people of journalism and asking the question and answering, getting questions and answering. Yeah. And I don't have any problem with that. Would you agree with that? Yes, totally. And again, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but the point is that uh, we've, uh, in my mind, uh, we're not playing very good football right now at all. And uh, it's beyond whether or not we have Derrick Henry or not. Derrick uh, Henry, Derrick Henry would help. Year. Uh, I don't know if he'd be having that career year in our situation. And that's really something you really do have to look at because if he had not had as many carries as our running backs have had, then he certainly probably wouldn't have attained uh, the uh, level of impact he's having. And then he's a real good complement to the type of offense they run. We don't run that. Okay. I'm, I'm going to just call bullshit here for a second because, you know, yes, we probably wouldn't run Derrick Henry quite as much. But when we did run – if we went from, say, three and a half yards with Zeke to, you know, five yards a carry, as opposed to it being, you know, second down and nine or second down and 12, and it was second down and five, it might make things a little bit better. It might make people actually respect the running game. It might actually make people worry about him breaking a big one, which might make... I don't know, your play action more effective? And if people are play, you know, getting sucked in, using him as a decoy, 
that your passing game might be more effective, okay? And I would think that Jerry Jones would know that since he's been a football man for all these years. Type offense at all. Uh, our situation is more about, frankly, it's more about holding your blocks. It's more about not making mistakes. It's more about, in my mind, the receivers running through a tough man-to-man coverage and running on through it. And, uh, if you will, get away from uh, that. Uh, the, the types of things that we all think we should be looking at is, well, we're designing bad plays or we're designing uh, uh, bad concepts. Uh, the facts are that there's some of that, but there's also some of uh, execution. Uh, there's some of uh, uh, the talent. Uh, I like our talent. I really do like our talent. I like our young talent. But young talent has a few more mistakes associated with it than uh, uh, than if you are dealing with a veteran player. So wait a minute. Hold on. So so wait 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 wait. Uh, I'm I'm asking this for a friend. So is he saying that having good quality players that can make plays doesn't fit our system? Uh, I think that's what he's saying. Although you've got to have young talent, as I've said. Uh, Derrick Henry didn't fit because principally of managing the cap, of managing the cap in anticipation of the players that we were going to sign weeks later or anticipation of the players we're going to be signing in the future. Jerry Jones here on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, Jerry, I thought Mike was very detailed yesterday um, in his bye week recap. Can you tell us from your perspective some of the things you guys really wanted to refocus or address during the bye week? Well, we need to uh, uh, really, from from every one of us, uh, need to evaluate where we've made decisions we'd like to have back. And I'm talking about every one of us. Uh, I have to do it all the time. And uh, uh, so uh, Mike has to do that uh, from his standpoint. He said that yesterday. And then he has to ask each player, let's sit down and see uh, what we can do. Uh, Players, when they want to work on something, uh, they usually go out with the help of a teammate or sometimes with the help of the entire defense if you're an offensive player. And you work on what it is you're short on. I remember DeMarcus Ware used to stay out after practice with our tackles. Not for DeMarcus, but for the tackles' benefit of being able to uh, basically get out, quote, take his steps, stay, uh, just stay keep his uh, uh, knees bent, and uh, basically be in the handle of DeMarcus Ware. Those guys worked on those kinds of things. They do it now. They just need more of it. Jerry Jones joining us here okay. on 105 to the Fan. Jerry, you got San Francisco coming up this week, and they've obviously been a, a thorn in the side for you guys. Is this a game you would consider a measuring stick type game or a, or a must win game potentially for where you guys are at this season? Listen, we're three and three, and we all saw it, and we know how we uh, uh, ended up beating Cleveland. Uh, we know what we didn't do against New Orleans. We know what we did do against Pittsburgh. You can take all of that. You know, all that counts is what we're doing out here next week in San Francisco and the games after that. Uh, can we be a better team? Can we uh, 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 be, uh, let's say, uh, have better, uh, have better field position in the overall schemes? I'm not talking about really being out on the field, but can we get ourselves where we don't have some things happen to us like happened to us the other day and we get run out of the stadium? Yes, we can. Of course we can. We better. And uh, I remember when I changed uh, uh, and went to Jason Garrett, and we were one in seven. And basically we had the same difference in the score against Green Bay. It was exactly the same difference as against Detroit. And we go up to New York and we win that game the week we changed out uh, the coaching. Now I've regretted making that change. Just so you know, if I had that to do over again, I might not have done it. I might, what I'd love to have done is sit down and talk to Wade when Wade came in and said, I need to, uh, um, we needed better defense. I need to be, uh, find me a defensive coordinator, and I'm the best defensive coordinator I know. 
Well, he is because all he did was go over to Denver, and I've never heard this in the NFL, but people around the league said they won that Super Bowl because of coaching, Wade Phillips. And I let him out of here just because of, of that. Now, we did win the next game from that standpoint after having the same kind of spread that we had the week before here. So uh, uh, those are just the kind of experiences that uh, make you know that you can make these decisions, but there's a good chance that you're making it and you should have gone the other way. Now, what you have to do is take those bad decisions and bust your butt and get out and make those better or good decisions when you've made them and you look back and say, I wish I'd gone the other way. You've got to do something about them if you can. Wise man told me one time, the man upstairs didn't make it to where most people make decisions about 50-50. It's what you do with the bad decisions and what you do with the good decisions that's a differentiator. Jerry, you know, you talk about San Francisco in this game coming up this weekend. You you do have, it sounds like, the 49ers are going to be missing several key contributors, Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey, uh, potentially Debo Samuel. How do those players missing from San, San Francisco change your standards, if at all, for what you want to see from your team against them? Well, first of all, not having really outstanding players is absolutely a part of the NFL. That's part of having a team. There's very few, if any, that I can recall that haven't had major injury adjustments as you go along. That's just like being a boxer and stepping up there and getting jabbed. You know you're going to get jabbed and going to get hit on the nose many times. Well, well, injuries are a part of that. You have to have the depth. You have to have the readiness to overcome those injuries or at least be... Uh, competitive to be satisfied in the mirror or be satisfied for our fans. So I really don't think that San Francisco should be looked at as what they don't have. Now, strategically, if they were weak, we thought Detroit was weak in the secondary. So we came out firing at the secondary. That was our game plan, to fire at the secondary. Had you had it to do over again, you might have done it a different way. Against San Francisco, Uh, I don't know that uh, uh, apart from just one-on-one areas of both sides, uh, sides, defense, offense, really even special teams, how we will address they've got young players or new players at that position. And it could affect you, but in general, that's San Francisco we're playing out there. And you're right, they've put it on us last several times. You think? Jerry Jones here on Sean and RJ, or RJ and RJ, 105.3 The Fan, as Choppy would like it to be renamed. Uh, Jerry, what did you think of Troy Aikman's wide receiver comments about route running? And in y'all's film study, did you see any of that and agree with any of what Troy said? Troy knows football. My goodness, he he lives it. Uh, When he was here, He's one of the most astute and hardworking mm-hmm. people I've ever seen. At uh, are, uh, are you getting anything from this interview? Tape or looking at how a team is playing. Uh, Troy's credible boy and should be. And not only that, you can imagine he's not just interested in taking a whack at the Cowboys. Uh, he uh, feels uh, as much or, or more than anybody does about the Cowboys. He's very professional. Uh, I think he's very fair, and certainly you can look at what we've been doing. You can look at such things as the separation compared to other teams. That's that analytics that you uh, work with today. But fundamentally, uh, I was talking with Mike, and our our players need to work on when they've got tight coverage, they need to work on not, uh, br- pushing on through uh, physical contact, pushing on through it. Now, that's just an example. That's not the only thing. Uh, But I'm pretty confident that we've got the ability to uh, uh, coach, and we've got some receivers that take the coaching uh, and can improve. That's the big thing, improve. Jerry, Amari Cooper was traded this past week. I know that it's a different year. Mm. Supply and demand is obviously different. But when a guy gets traded, a guy that you have previously traded, do you ever – Take a step back, compare compensation. Is there anything you can learn from compensation packages from trades uh, around the league, especially when there is a similarity like the Amari trade? Yeah, absolutely I can. 
we went for the dollars. When we traded Amari Cooper, we saved almost $20 million for our cap and in the future. Oh. We took a lesser draft pick to get that savings. When he made this. Okay. Jerry, you're full of shit. Oh, we saved $20 million, and, and we took a lesser pit, cap pit to do that. Okay, well, d- dude, dude, you do know that you paid more for Amari Cooper the season that he was traded than the Cleveland Browns did having him, and that they literally, literally traded him for more than what you did. This is where you're full of shit. Just admit you, you, you see, you'd make me, it'd be better if you just say, you know what, we were short-sighted, we, we messed up. Because you turned around and then you ended up spending $32 million guaranteed to Michael Gallup. So don't talk to me about what you saved. Moved the other day, Cleveland went for more draft pick and less savings. It was very simple. Jerry, when you look at the injuries uh, situation with Micah Parsons and Deron Bland, do you anticipate having either one of those guys available for San Francisco this weekend? Yeah, and you can't tell today. Uh, uh, I visited right before we came on with our trainers, and uh, uh, you, we've got to see uh, how they're uh, uh, playing, how they're running, uh, how the uh, uh, exercise or the running of the prior day, how they're affected the next day. Uh, we're uh, we're not going to be able to tell their availability until right at game time, in my view. Jerry, I'm interested um, in asking you about Tom Brady ownership. A lot of talk about conflict of interest. Are you going to be paranoid? We've seen you a lot of times with Tom before the games down on the field. He's now got some broadcasting restrictions. Is that a competitive advantage? Do you worry about Brady scouting extra, knowing stuff you're doing? Your your comments and reaction to Tom Brady, NFL owner. Yeah, uh, I think we all live lives with an element of compromising. Uh, and I think it's different strokes for different folks. And uh, there's, uh, uh, there's certainly the idea that, hey, he's not going to be able to help being for the Raiders uh, if he owns a part of the team. Uh, so that's there. But as far as his integrity, as far as coming in, and uh, and by the way, he's doing a great job, great job. But as far as coming in and getting uh, uh, some confidential inside information that could impact the outcome of the game, uh, I would bet my life that he will uh, be uh, not only responsible, but he'll be honorable. And uh, uh, there's no question in my mind he will be. And so I don't have the sensitivity of him talking to our coaches uh, around the league uh, and uh, giving the Raiders an ultimate big edge. I don't see that. Jerry, last question for you. The trade deadline coming up in a couple of weeks. I know everyone's always talking to you about buying and buying and buying, but if the next couple of weeks don't go as you'd like, is there a possibility that maybe you would consider going the other direction and trying to get some value for the future and taking on the role of a seller? Yeah, I don't see anything uh, uh, that would impact us uh, in any way. Uh, I made the decision of how we're going. We made the decision of how we're going forward. Uh, when I extended DAC and when I signed CD, and so uh, uh, that should have and does put you in a direction uh, that you're going. So that if you see us moving in any way by chance during this trade deadline, trading somebody, uh, that would be because that we are going in a different direction with defense, offense, uh, whatever you want to do. Obviously, we're going in different directions than we did with Quinn in a small part. And so the same skill, the same player might not work as well in what we want to do with Zimmer as we do, uh, uh, as we had when we uh, had Quinn. Uh, and you also see the very obvious. Uh, you better be thinking about what you want to look like three and four years from now when you uh, pick up a player or make a big trade or you draft somebody. You better adapt it to uh, uh, where you're going to go. For instance, has anybody... Uh, thought about that uh, if you're going to invest a huge amount of money in a running back, you better be planning on running the ball. 
running the ball. Oh, my God. Okay. okay. So for instance, we wanted we to go. balance it more, then you might not have had as much emphasis on the running back. And so uh, that's just one of the many issues that comes through your mind. And you got to get that straight before you make these decisions that uh, take a lot of space out of your cap for the next three or four years. So all of that goes into it. Uh, this last one is a selfish question for us to try to make some money. Jerry, would you, re- being the marketing genius that you are, would you rename this show the Yahoos or the Tribunal? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this right now. Uh, uh, I love uh, uh, the uh, uh, I love the lightness of the Yahoo aspect of it. <laughs> I, I really do. I really do. Uh, humor. Humor or lightness in my life has been vital because when you get in tough spots or when you get in tough angst, uh, a little humor at the right time in the foxhole is some good stuff. I love the job that y'all do, and you do have an element of that. Now, that still doesn't keep it. I asked Michael Irvin one time, who I'd rather be in a dark alley with Mike than anybody I know. But when Mike gets it really gets going, he starts laughing. And the more scared he is, the more rough it is, the more he laughs. And so the point is we all have different ways so you ain't of laughing. dealing with angst or dealing with pressure. Uh, I like the way we do this show. And uh, uh, I'll tell you this right now. I, I don't think it does us uh, any harm at all to have disagreements. Uh, I don't think it does any harm to show emotion. Uh, I think all of that is a, a part of it. I saw recently where somebody said, boy, you can't be in this game, certainly as a player or a coach or what have you, without uh, 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 showing temper, without showing emotion. And um, I think you guys do a great job of that. Uh, I try to so uh, much ask uh, uh, both basically ways here. Uh, have uh, more than just uh, – uh, answers that you could get by reading uh, the paper. I try to do that when sometimes with emotion, and uh, I'm not uh, uh, I'm not reluctant to show emotion. Well, look, it's good to have you back. Uh, we appreciate it as always. As we ha- as we have. Okay, so Jerry Jones did a lot of speaking and really didn't say anything. And it appears that, uh, you know, it's a kumbaya moment. So the fireworks that people were expecting literally just fizzled out. You didn't learn anything. You know, he's still trying to deflect and basically say, well, we, we couldn't afford to invest with Derrick Henry because you would actually have to run him. You'd actually have to run him. And he doesn't fit our system because we don't want to, want to run the football. Do I, do I have that right? Do, do I have that right? I, I think that's what he is literally saying to us right now is, yeah, he didn't fit our system because he's a good running back. We're better suited having guys that are lesser talent. So there you have it, good people. There you have it. I don't know what else to tell you all, um, but we're in trouble. We're in trouble. So we will – analyze this you'll hear all kinds of clips uh from people and things so it is what it is all right good people i've got to go get on the roof and take care of that thing and we'll keep you up to speed with everything that is the dallas cowboys i'm mark holmes and of course as always i appreciate you guys for watching it's just falling down because 500 is going to going to net so you know my ass can only take so much you're uh, up that ass. Come on, hock work, hock work, hock work, hock work. Up yeah. All right, let's go. That ass can only take so much. <laughs> Come on, hock work, hock work, hock work, hock work. The Eagles are trying to. Uh, did I just say what I think? I...